Hello and welcome to this demonstration of JavaFX Scene Builder 2.0. We're going to make a demo app with an aeronautical theme and show how to build layout, apply CSS and connect code. We'll begin by adding some components from the library. First I drag a split pane and drop it onto the content panel. I then add a list view and scroll pane as children of the split pane. I'm now dragging a map image from my desktop and dropping it inside the scroll pane. When you do this, Scene Builder creates an image view node for you. The map image is pretty big, so I choose Modify, Use Computed Sizes, and now it displays at its true size. I choose the Wrap In function to wrap the map inside a pane. This allows me to add a menu button inside the pane as a sibling of the image view. In our app, this menu button will act as a pointer on our map. By default, a menu button comes with two menu items. We're only going to use one in our app, so I'm using the hierarchy to remove the other. Scene Builder has a neat feature allowing you to show sample data while you're building your layout. This helps you visualize how components, like the list view we've used here, will look when data is added. It's easy to interact with nodes directly in the content panel. Here I'm selecting the split pane and adjusting the position of its splitter to the left. Now that our app is starting to take shape, we can use the preview feature to simulate how our layout will look inside a window. As you can see, I can adjust the window size to see how our components will resize, and I can also interact with the components directly. I'm now going to save the FXML file, and I'm putting it inside the source directory of the NetBeans project, which contains the logic for the app. Next, we'll add some components to form a toolbar. I begin by wrapping the split pane inside a VBox. I then drag a HBox onto the content view, and by hovering the mouse near the top of the VBox, I can place the HBox as the first item. HBoxes and VBoxes respectively lay out their children horizontally and vertically. The HBox is going to serve as a container for my toolbar items. I now add a label. Textual controls such as labels can be edited directly by double clicking them inside the content panel. I then drag and drop a button, copy and paste it and edit the text of each. I place a slider in between the buttons and this little group of components will control the zooming of our map. Next we'll make a group of components which will control the appearance of our application. After pasting another label, I add a couple of toggle buttons which will enable a high contrast theme and also change the size of our UI. We'll now edit some properties of the HBox to tweak the appearance of the toolbar area. I select it, change its alignment property to center left and set its size to computed. I then edit the margin and spacing properties to move the children of the HBox away from its edges and add some space between them. I'm now going to use a little trick with a region to space out the two groups of controls in the toolbar. I place the region between the two groups and set its size to computed. As a region is a child of the HBox, I can set its HBox constraints to force it to always grow horizontally as the app is resized. Again, we'll use the preview feature to test how the toolbar will resize in the window. As you can see, it resizes nicely as planned. The expanding region pushes the visuals group to the right. However, you'll notice that the rest of the app is no longer resizing. When we wrap the split pane inside the VBox, we affected its layout, so we need to fix this. I select the split pane, tell it to compute its size, and change its VBox constraints so that it will always grow vertically. I then select the root VBox and make it a more useful size using the content panel. Now when we preview the layout again, you can see that the app is once again resizing as intended. The next stage is to add some CSS to our app. I can add a style sheet to the root VBox container by using the style sheets property in the inspector. Once the style sheet is added, Scene Builder can detect style classes inside the file. 
So here, we select the menu button, remove its text, and add the Map Pin Style class. You can see that Scene Builder's content panel immediately updates to show the added CSS styling. The menu button is now visually transformed into a pin. Because we saved our FXML file inside the source directory of the NetBeans project, Scene Builder can look inside the directory and suggest Java files to add as a controller. We can do this inside the controller section of the document panel. Once a controller Java file is added, Scene Builder is able to look inside the file and find methods and FX IDs. I can select individual components and add the required method in order that they execute code when they are clicked. I can also select components and add FX IDs to them. FX IDs are unique to the component they are assigned to and allow the component to be identified by the controller. When I select a node, Scene Builder provides a list of unassigned FX IDs. I now switch to NetBeans. We can see the main.java class, which is loading the airport app FXML file we've been making. This is the controller class, where the FX IDs and methods are stored, which we've been connecting to our FXML. Lastly, this is the CSS file, which we attach to the root vbox of our FXML. Now that all of our code is attached to our FXML, we can take a look at the running app. One of the advantages of using FXML is that you can experiment with the layout and appearance of your app without having to change the attached code. Scene Builder helps you not to break any connections to the code which would stop your app from running. For example, I get a warning if I try to remove a node with an assigned FX ID. Now I'm completely changing the layout, moving the toolbar to the bottom of the app and changing the order of the components in the split pane. I can even introduce a new node, in this case a chart. You can see that when I switch back to NetBeans, I'm still able to run the app with no code changes and a completely different layout. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks a lot for watching.